I have come to the conclusion in my journey that it is not selfish to have something of your own because most likely God has planted that desire in your heart. Hey, I'm Kim, host of Book Marketing Mania, and I'm so thrilled you're tuning in today as I'm talking with my friend, Ruthie Gray. Ruthie is a second timer on the show, and we had so much fun recording in person together, as you'll soon hear. If you are entering the empty nest season in your life, you will be so inspired by what Ruthie shares today from her new book, Empty Nest Awakening, Weaving the Threads of Your Passion into Purpose. Ruthie is a nonfiction author of three books, the host of the Authentic Online Marketing Podcast, and an Instagram and email marketing guru who's passionate about making online marketing so easy, your mom or Carol Brady could do it. I know God has so much in store for us throughout the seasons he carries us through, and the empty nest season is no different. So get ready to learn from Ruthie whether or not it's selfish to have a dream in this new season of life, finding time for something new if you're in the sandwich gap, and how to follow God's lead if you're unsure how to act on your dream. You're in for a treat today, so let's get to it. Hey, Ruthie, welcome to Book Marketing Mania. I'm so thrilled you're here with me on the mic in person at the Spark Conference. Hey, girl. (laughs) Rumi. That's right. We're having so so much fun. So glad to be here. Yeah, we get to record in our pajamas, which you guys don't get to see because it's yay for uh, audio podcasting. (laughs) So I wanted to talk to Ruthie about her new book coming out, Empty Nest Awakening. And first off, Ruthie, let me just ask you, what is an Empty Nest Awakening? It's where you find out what you're supposed to do when you grow up in the second half of life. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Yeah. And I uh, mentioned this in the introduction. I really do think there's so many good tips and lessons in here for really anybody in any season, although I know it is written for the empty Mm -hmm. season um, women, which I am in that age group, but I have a unique situation because I do have a special needs son. So I don't know when my emptiness season begins, but there's so many lessons in there for me because I do have another son, you know, who's launching into that. So it kind of gives me that empty nest season. Um, But I've really just been so encouraged by it. I want you to know, and it's such an easy read and it's something you can pop in your purse and take with you and just really dream about what the next season in your life has. So just keep that in mind. If you're not quite to the empty nest season, but you see it in your future, um, you definitely want to get Ruthie's book and just start thinking about how you can make some of those dreams come true that God might be laying on your heart. And that is the one thing I want to ask Ruthie is, because you talk about this in the book, is it selfish to have a dream for that next season of your life? Well, it's easy to think that it is because you're pulled in so many different directions. You may be, like in my instance, I'm a caregiver uh, for my mother. Used to be for both mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also a Gigi. Mm -hmm. And so I have grandkids that I want to spend time with. I have a husband and I have, you know, grown kids too. And not everyone lives in the same state. And, And so it's easy to think, well, I should be here for all my people. And you should be there for your people. But I have come to the conclusion in my journey that it is not selfish to have something of your own because most likely God has planted that desire in your heart. Yeah. Especially, you know, if you're walking with him and you're feeling that little nudge and that little desire, it's likely from him. Mm -hmm. I think that's so true. Yeah. And I remember you talk about caretaking and and we're going to talk about this in a little bit about the sandwich gap, but I think about like when I had, when my boys were little and then I was taking care of my mother-in-law and my grandmother-in-law both. And so definitely some of that sandwich generation. And I remember when my mother-in-law passed away, I was, that was kind of like, I was so lost. Like I didn't know what to do because I didn't have her to take care of. I still had other people to take care of still, but it it did kind of make me think, oh wait, what else am I supposed to be doing with this time? And then, and and it does make you think, oh, it's selfish to think like I've got other people to care about. You know, I I have plenty to fill my time, but Mm -hmm. that's when I kind of felt the, you know, the nudge about writing a book and then, you know, how we got into the online world. But anyway, I just, I just love, cause that's all you talk about in the book and just really encouraging us to move forward. And now you have a quote in the book that says your dream is God given and 
you are not selfish to act on it. And I love that so much because it's so true. <laughs> so, so let's talk about Ruthie. So like, you know, whenever you do kind of feel that dream on your heart, what is the first step you would recommend for somebody to take action on that? Well, I think it's important to kind of jot your thoughts down Mm -hmm. because a lot of times you don't know what's in your mind really until you start writing. Isn't that funny? I think it is. I I think that there is something to be said about putting pen to paper and just that slower kinetic action Mm -hmm. of writing down your thoughts because I'm so surprised sometimes at what comes out. Or if you if you'd rather be digital with it, you know, open up a Word doc or a Google doc and start typing out. Just type. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't really think, just type. And um, I think that's the first step is just kind of like getting it out or even talking with a friend or someone who knows you well, like your husband or, mm-hmm. or someone in your family. Yeah, that's great tips. What about, um, you know, so once you do kind of write it out and you kind of think, okay, this is the dream I feel like God's putting on my heart and I'm going to take action on it. How would you recommend for, you know, somebody that's coming out of or coming out and into busy seasons in midlife, just kind of that balance between if you are in a caretaker role still, or if you're just enjoying being a grandma, right? Or retiring or whatever the emptiness season brings you, how can you kind of balance, you know, having the enjoyment of living your life, but also um, taking on this new dream, like how do you balance it all? And I hate, I know a lot of people don't like that word balance, but yeah. but how do you kind of fit it all in? Well, it's not a cookie cutter solution, but my recommendation is once you kind of think about and gather your thoughts about what you might want to do, I recommend talking to your family, talking to your kids, talking to your husband, maybe even um, the people that you care give if if they're if that's in the picture. And just saying, hey, I am feeling this nudge and I need some time for this and communicating that you feel led to that. Mm -hmm. And is there a way that we can tag team on this or is there a way that you could help me? Just ask for help because a lot of times you're the one doing all the stuff. Mm -hmm. You're doing the stuff for everybody else. You're the hub. And that's fine. And a lot of times... We micromanage. I know I did. Mm -hmm. I was just like in this. I'm an only child, and Mm -hmm. I was taking care of both of my parents. I've done this since 2010. And there came a point where I was like, okay, I can't do all this on my own. Um, My mom was in the hospital with a broken hip, and my dad was at home. He was experiencing sundowners, and, and he was lost, and I needed to be both places at the same time. And... I just was like, Lord, I need help. And so I got gradually help. So if you can ask for help Mm -hmm. and ask your people to support your endeavors, or even just say from uh, 8 to 10 in the morning, I'm going to use that time for whatever your project is, whatever it is that's on your heart that you want to start doing. Mm -hmm. And just tell your family, this is going to be my time and ask them, to honor that. There are communicative ways to do this. Yeah, I think that's great. And your family, yeah, can be so supportive if they know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. If they know you have this dream that God's laid on your heart, they want to champion you for that. So I love that you talk about, you know, how can we get help from our family or other people? But also I know something you talk about in the book is um, there are, there is going to be a season of saying no to things. So you do have time to work on your dream, right? Mm -hmm. So what tips do you have to share with us about how we can (laughs) figure out what to say no to and how to say no? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Say no so you can say your best yes is uh, the one of the chapters. And it's kind of like when you're first starting on your venture and you've already communicated with your family that you're protecting your time and you're getting a little bit down the road um, and you're kind of seeing where you need to go, it's easy to have other opportunities come along. Like, for instance, when I was writing this book, I had a lot of opportunities. People were asking me, hey, will you teach this summit for me? And, you know, like a session on Instagram or email marketing. Um, And someone else would say, hey, will you join my mastermind? And 
And there were all these other really good things that were coming along, but I realized that I wasn't accomplishing the big goal for the year Mm -hmm. that I knew that God had laid on my heart. And that's the thing. If you can kind of gather your thoughts at the beginning of the year or, or even the middle of the year, whenever you start and figure out what the big project is that God has for you and then sift through everything else and say, I'm going to stay on this track because I have a business too, you Mm -hmm. know, and I have people that I have to take care of. I have my mentorship and I have my authentic online marketing school. And so I knew that those were priorities, but I also knew the book was a priority. And so then I was just like, okay, from now on, from March, April, May, June, I am taking one month off the podcast If someone asks me to contribute to their book or to be in their mastermind or whatever, the answer is no. That was a hard choice, you know, because I got some really um, juicy offers Uh for things. But I was like, no, I know I'm supposed to stay in my lane. It's a no. And then I went to, after I took that one month off of the podcast, and I went down to only releasing two episodes a month Mm -hmm. instead of one a week. And I thought, well, the podcast is going to die. But it didn't die. And the downloads didn't decrease, Mm -hmm. which was great. So that's the kind of thing I mean. You know, Mm -hmm. try to determine, along with the Lord, what is your best yes and and say no to the rest. Be be sure to bathe it in prayer. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. Just, you know, having God direct it. And I love that you talk about, you know, when you act on your passion, God doesn't steer a parked car. Mm -hmm. And I want to read something out of your book that really... uh, help me so much. And I think it'll help everyone for, you know, if you, if it's a book on your heart or start a podcast, whatever God's calling you to in this season, (laughs) Ruthie writes, maybe you think you need more time to get ready. You're not good enough, or you don't know all the steps, but friend, it's not up to you to decide whether you're good enough, because if God is calling you to something, then he's calling you to someone. And through your actions, that someone will in turn be used by him to reach someone else. And I think that's just so profound, Ruthie, because I think about that with like our books, you know, you just never know who you're reaching because you don't see your readers, right? And you, you, but you don't know what, how you're impacting their lives and who they turn around and tell about it. And same with podcasting, you know, it's just, you just never know who you're reaching. And we know we reach people far and wide and they tell people, but we just never know. We just know we're called to this and we just need to be obedient um, and follow where God's leading us. So I think Ruthie does such a great job about that. And I want to, um, just ask you maybe some practical things, Ruthie, for our audience of writers and authors that are building their own audiences of, you know, book buyers, which you're in the middle of, you've been doing that. And you maybe didn't even really know you were doing that, right? Because you maybe didn't have your book on the horizon when you started your podcast. So I want to ask you about that, just how that's been for you to kind of dive into podcasting, you know, just why you even started your podcast. And if you have any tips for newbies that are thinking, this is my next step that God's calling me to. Why did I start my podcast? I just felt like that was a natural step for me. I kind of hinted that God gives me a a big project every year. Uh And it's usually in January when I am planning my year. December, January. And so in 2020, I thought, you know, it seems like podcasting is the way to go. People are listening to podcasts like crazy. And so I felt the impression of the Lord to start a podcast, but I had no idea how, but that was going to be my project for 2020. And I said, Lord, there's no time. I don't know how I'm going to do this and run my business. And then guess what? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of time. (laughs) Pandemic shut us all down. And I was like, perfect (laughs) opportunist over here. So, um, yeah, I, I was searching for someone to teach me how to do it. I didn't need a self-paced thing because I would I knew I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. A lot of women I I find that a lot of women our age are just we're over the self-paced stuff. That's why I mentor mm-hmm. women um, online with marketing and have my communities because that's where they're at. You know, they just say just tell us what to do and we'll go do it. Yes. So I found our friend Ren Robbins mm-hmm. in a mutual Facebook group, and it was kind of this share thread of, what are you thinking about doing? And she said, I'm thinking about making a podcast course. And I saw that. I didn't know her from uh-huh. Adam. And I was like, I think 
you shouldn't do a podcast course. I think you should do podcast coaching and I'll be your first client because after she commented that, then I went and looked up her Friends of a Feather uh-huh, podcast yeah. and I saw that it was like four years old uh-huh. and I was like, surely she knows what she's doing. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's how it started, and I was her very first client, and now Ren is just, like, exploding. She's popping out podcast newbies everywhere, and she's yeah, great Yeah, at that's it. our friend, Ren Robbins, and she mm-hmm. hosts the Don't Wing It podcast, and she, yeah, y'all heard her on the podcast before. If you haven't, I'll be sure to put a link to her episode, but yeah, she's so good, and it's her passion for sure to help podcasters, and mm-hmm. she's, you know, done it for many years, so yeah, I'm so glad you gave a shout out to Ren. Yeah, so we just... We mapped out a, a three-month plan, and uh, I wanted her with walking me through what to do at every juncture to get hooked up and get my podcast and how, what kind of mic and all this stuff, you know, and she's it was very affordable. And that's one thing I would say, if you're thinking about having a podcast, please don't invest a ton of money in your mic and, and all the software and everything. Just start simple, just really as simple and basic bare bones as you can. And then I was up and running. And so then she was with me during that first month of release, too. That way, if anything happened, like a a breakdown of some sort, Uh you know, like we always have with technology, then I had her to fall back on. And so I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what, yeah, because I figure, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, in our audience, they either, they have a dream on their heart to write a book or to start a podcast or both because mm-hmm. they might be podcasting to build their audience for their book one day. And we had a great conversation on the podcast way back when I started, Ruthie was my guest on episode four. And so I definitely <laughs> so encourage you to, yeah, look back on that episode. <laughs> I'll put a link to it as well because it was really good about building authentic relationships on Instagram as you're building your audience. Mm-hmm. And I think that's super important for our audience to know about. And you've done such a great job of that, Ruthie. And I know like you, you share Instagram tips, but you share so much about you personally, which again, I don't think that was like you really knew, but like how that's really helped to build your audience for this book. Like you've really Mm -hmm. bonded with your community and now they're just championing this book just like I am. And it's so fun. So I think everybody, you know, definitely tune into that episode and watch what Ruthie's doing. So Ruthie, tell us as your book comes out, how can everybody start getting their hands on it? And if you have some goodies to share, we'd love to share those as well. Oh, I have goodies. I definitely have goodies. So you know what? You can go to AuthenticOnlineMarketing.com slash book and pre-order if <clears throat> before October 17th. You can get goodies, bonus goodies, and a free sample chapter and the journaling guide that goes with it. And Or here is an easy fix. Go to RuthieGray.com and it will take you to that book site as well. Okay. So, awesome. Super simple. Yay. I'll put links to those in the show notes. Well, great, Ruthie. This has been so fun, especially to be here in person together and get to record together. What a blessing to me and my listeners. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled that we got to do this. Me too. Oh, y'all, don't you just love Ruthie's heart? We had such a blast at the Spark Christian Podcasters Conference together and even recorded another episode that will air on her podcast soon. Be sure to check out Ruthie's Empty Nest Awakening book and her bonuses and start weaving the threads of your own passion into purpose in this new season of life. Thanks for tuning in today. And as always, I'll be there for you next time to help you build your audience and market your book one podcast at a time. See you then.